Welcome to Inside Beauty, a show where we help you transform your beauty from the inside out. My name is Asosa E. I'm a certified nutrition specialist, behavioral coach, and founder of Staying Ages Coaching. Today, my guest is Amber Lynn Johnson. She's a licensed esthetician and founder of Adenla Handcrafted Essentials. On this show, we help you transform your natural beauty regimen and your skincare regimen using ingredients that you may find in your kitchen. We also help guide you and inform you on how to create natural products using some things that you may have at home and what ingredients you need to avoid. Today on the show, we're going to talk about moisturizing. Definitely depending on the skin type, something that is going to be suitable for that skin. So if you have someone that has drier skin, a heavier, richer, more occlusive oil will be much more suitable for them. Someone with oilier skin, they can still use a variety of oils, just the type of oil would be the preference of a dry oil, like a watermelon seed oil, and even an argan oil, just something that's gonna not clog the pores because someone with oily skin, they don't want to have an overproduction of oil and they definitely don't want their pores clogged. And so someone with combination skin, there's a gamut. They can use the rosehip seed oil, they can use sea buckthorn oil, grapeseed oil is great for them, argan oil as well. But like the really heavy oils I want to stay away from because they'll be a little too much for them, like the baobab and even like mangango oil, which I love, but it's really, mangango really Mangango oil, that's yes, very exotic. It is. <laughs> what is that? It's a, it's a nut oil that's from Africa. I'm not sure exactly the region, but okay. it is from the continent. Oh, but cool. it is something that is super thick. So when I've done like a chemical peel, mm. or I've really abraded the skin heavily, that's something that I'll use to repair and actually to prevent any water loss from the skin, the transdermal water loss. It's like the best way, because it's almost wow. like a... It isn't like a butter, but it has a consistency and the thickness of a butter. But okay. it is still an oil. I think a lot of people might be new to using oils in general as a moisturizer. Sure. I know that I like transition. I think that we grow up people using Vaseline, lotion, the other potions they get from the store. Yeah. What's the benefit of using an oil versus using all that other stuff? I got into using natural products back when I was pregnant with my son. And so just thinking about going and using Burt's Bees and that being like the go-to for him and it being something so simple where it was just like a sweet almond oil and mm -hmm. a little bit of like carrot seed oil. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And then also looking at like Jergens and Baby Magic and all the other different brands that are out there, there's so many different ingredients that number one, you can't pronounce. Number two, right. it's like, why is this in here once you get like a cosmetic dictionary and actually go and see the derivative of these ingredients? It's like, why would I put like a petrochemical on my skin? Yes. Exactly. And so in my mind, I'm um, using a single, sometimes just keeping it simple with using a single oil is the best bet because it's safer. And I just like the idea of getting away from toxicity as much as possible. Yes, and it's super important because everything that we put on our skin gets absorbed. I Absolutely. think we all forget that. We mm -hmm. forget that it's an organ, right? Yeah. That it's a living, breathing thing. And so we have to be careful of what we put on it. Just as much as what we put inside. Yes, I love that. So if you're trying to keep it simple, oils are a way that you can keep it very simple and know exactly what's in your moisturizer. So what are some things we can actually moisturize our skin with? Yeah, so like we, what we have in front of us, the rose hip seed oil, I love that. I definitely use skincare quality oils on my body just because I am fancy like that. Um, <laughs> but I just want the best for me and I know yeah. that like it's accessible and I don't have to spend $120 on something from the mayor when I can make an oil that's going to be, if not much better, way more or less expensive, but also I'll have enough to last me for a really long time because you can buy, you know, 54 ounces. Larger amounts. Yeah, definitely. And so the rose hip seed oil is one that is good for the body, but for the face, definitely because it's one that helps to eliminate scar tissue. It's a wound mm. healer. It's high in vitamin E, so it's really gonna help to just get things back in order and keeping things elastic, which I feel like we care we care about all of our skin, but the face is the first thing that we see. Yeah. And so that's like our, our main priority. But yeah. Just, there, is a, there are a variety of oils that we can use depending on what's going on with your skin and also like the temperature, the temperature in addition to like what your goal is with your skin. Yeah, that makes sense. So I got really nerded out and I was like, okay, let me let me look up these fatty acid things. And there's a whole thing about linoleic acid and oleic acid and how some oils are higher in either 
And sometimes that makes it better for certain types of skin. Can you talk about that a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. So when I think of like high in linoleic acid, I think of it being anti-inflammatory. Mm. So those that have issues such as pimples, pustules, psoriasis, dermatitis, anything that's like out of whack, it's a way to really bring things to homeostasis and to just calm the skin down so that way it can do what it's supposed to do. Our skin is supposed to protect us. And so if we don't protect it, the things that are in the environment, just the idea of getting tiny microscopic cuts, like you want your skin barrier to be intact, so mm. that way whatever is on the outside is not gonna be able to get inside of our body. Right, that's good, that's really good. So I have my Moringa oil here, and I'm obsessed with Moringa oil, I use Moringa oil every day. Moringa is really amazing because it's so nutrient dense, 92 nutrients, 46 antioxidants, child. The oil actually comes from Moringa seed. I usually get the cold press kind, which I really like, it's high in vitamin E, it's high in oleic acid, which I realized I like it better because it's actually a little bit thicker, I think. Mm -hmm. But they say that Moringa oil is also emollient, so it, it locks in moisture, which is really, really awesome. I was really surprised to, to learn that Moringa oil can be used for arthritis, for anti-inflammatory, anything you want to like reduce inflammation for because it's anti-inflammatory, it's antiseptic, it's antimicrobial, it does so many things. People put it on cuts, people have used it to reduce their arthritis pain. But I just use it for beauty, child. I'm trying to look good, okay? I'm trying to get all them nutrients <laughs> in my face. <laughs> so I use that oil a great deal. Watermelon seed oil is a dry oil. And mm. so I'm just thinking about those that have oily skin, mm. those that are living in Houston, and so they don't want a lot of moisture, but they don't want to walk out not having like, having nothing on their skin. And also those that wear makeup, because like you still want to be moisturized on underneath your makeup, but you don't want something that's going to have the makeup smearing around Running. and having to sit for a really long time for it to absorb. It's a dry oil, so it absorbs really quickly. Mm. And it's it's high in vitamin A, C, and E, so in my mind, it's like a cocktail for the skin. It's like a multivitamin cocktail. Exactly, I love that. I love that. So we already got two oils that are like a multivitamin. Yeah. Because that's how I feel like my Moringa oil is for me. And then tell us about argan oil. I've actually heard about argan oil more for hair than I have for your skin, so. But I didn't know, you could use for your skin, it's not too heavy for your skin? Yeah, it's not. And so again, I make products, and so thinking about like, the ingredients that I put on my hair, it's still gonna be a part of my scalp. It's still gonna matriculate to my face. It's still, in my line, I wanna use the same quality. So like back in the day, mm. you would never put pink oil moisturizer in your face and then put it all over your body. You remember pink Not oil? that pink oil, <laughs> not that, oh gosh. I don't want that in, in my family's body, and I don't want that in my body. And so yes. using argan oil, on the hair, great, but also on the face as well. So the benefits are the vitamin A and the vitamin E, but it's like a medium weight oil, so those that have combination skin can get really good benefits from it. Okay. But it's a really good massage oil, so it's a little higher in hmm. price. Typically, when you're using something for the body, you're not gonna use like something that would cost like $100 for an ounce because you're gonna go through it so quickly. Yeah. And so when you were talking about using the refined and the cold um, press, cold press yes. well, the un unrefined. unrefined, that's like the best method in my mind for skin because you want all those nutrients. Um, yeah. Not that I don't care so much about the body, but I'll get a grapeseed oil that isn't, that is refined because maybe at that time I don't want to spend $50 and I'll just spend like a couple of bucks, but I'll have something that is still much better than a jerk and still much better than like Dove or anything that right. would be in the market because it's something that I can put inside of my body. So of course I'm going to put it on the outside of my body. That's so good. So if you're trying to save money on your actual body, you could get an oil that's not, that's technically not cold press, whatever, yeah. because it's larger amounts. But for your face, you want to want to use something that's cold pressed and a little bit more bougie, child. Absolutely. Get that bougie oil for your face, okay? <laughs> and then what's this last one? That one's grapeseed. Awesome. Yeah, so. And we talked about grapeseed a little bit, but break it down for us again. Yeah, definitely. Grapeseed is one of my favorites. One that you can use hair, skin, body. It's a lightweight oil, but it has the vitamin A and the vitamin E, which I feel like is in a lot of these oils, but there is a higher content because of it having the resveratrol, which is in Ooh. grapeseed. Break down for us the benefits of body oiling in general. Like yes, definitely. So I'm an oiler. I'm not oil twice a day, even in Houston, dealing with this heat. But I, I want my skin to look a certain way. I want my skin to feel a certain way. And I like to take that time to touch on myself and to love on myself. And so like, either whether it's before meditation, whether it's before my bath, whether it's after my bath, I, there are certain rituals that I need for myself and I try to encourage other women to do the same thing because I feel like, number one, getting in touch with yourself, there's nothing more important than getting in touch with yourself. But using something, loving on yourself, infusing your body in addition to on a cellular level, like applying those lipids and, and looking at and thinking of it as the fact that it's going down each layer, mm -hmm. hitting the bones. Mm -hmm. And so keeping the bones supple, keeping the joints movable, like 
that can happen from you oiling your body. And wow. so like, like in my mind, first line of defense, I want to look good, but later on down the line, I want to be able to move and I want to be mobile. So I'm allowing myself by using the oils on my skin to aid in that process. I love that. How often would you recommend average person? I know you sound like you had a very special routine. Yeah, I do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but for the rest of us who are like, okay, I wash my face in the morning, I wash my face at night, is yeah. twice a day enough? Or do you, what do you, what do you think? As far as what, moisturizing or Yeah, moisturizing. So anytime you play, you want to moisturize, for sure. Okay. Like, any, like in my mind, like I, I make soaps and people are like, you know, is this gonna make my skin dry? The whole point of cleansing is to remove the oils. So yes. the whole reason for moisturizing is to replenish the oils that you remove from cleansing. Got and it. so when it comes to body oiling, like I like to heat it up so that way it can really penetrate because the best way to apply oil is when your skin is still wet. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes I'm at work and I just need oil. Mm. I don't have access to get in the water. Right. So I can still warm it up and then apply it so that way you can still penetrate instead of sitting on, on the surface. But if you can oil your body at least twice a day, I really feel like just starting once a day, you'll notice. Well, I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of this show. I hope you understood the benefits of moisturizing. I don't want to see any of y'all ashy out here in the streets, okay? Talked about rosehip oil, moringa oil, watermelon seed oil, which you may have never heard of, argan oil. I want to leave you with a nutrition tip today. Just as we talk about putting stuff on your skin, don't forget that your diet is a huge part of having beautiful, amazing skin. So don't forget to also get omega-3 fatty acids in your diet. There are three types of omega-3s, ALA, DHA, and EPA, and the ALA is usually the plant-based one. So things like walnuts, chia seeds, flaxseed, all of those things are very much giving you a really great dose of omega-3s. Also hemp seed is a good one. And if you're not plant-based, a lot of people know that you know fatty fish is where they're getting their omega-3s. The other thing is that if you feel like you're not getting enough in your diet, you can supplement. If you're plant-based, I highly recommend you get an algae-based omega-3 fatty acid and get those in regularly so you can get that EPA and DHA. Those all help with the suppleness of your skin, the glow, all of that is very, very helpful. So make sure that you pay attention to your diet as well and look at those omega-3s, all right? Until next time, stay beautiful from the inside out.